I did some educational videos years ago and I swore I'd never do them again. But going forward, I can actually see value in videos. So anyway, I thought I'd get some practice in with some videos looking at unmanned vehicles. Now, this is the first of three and it looks at the smaller end of the market. Now, I suspect I might have had the wrong camera settings, so please bear with me. The small vessels I'm talking about here are the sort of size one person can get out of the back of the car and stick in the water. They're normally controlled by radio link from the shore via a mast set up on bank. So, where can they work? Well, shallow water. Small unmanned vessels are often suited to surveying reservoirs, lakes, rivers, monitoring harbours, shipping marinas, mining, mining pits, tailing ponds, sewage plants inspection zones, dams, all sorts of places like that. Um, they normally hold, contain HD video cameras, single or multi-beam echo sounders, side scans, ADCP. The general point with small vessels is that the sensors are getting smaller and less power hungry and that either means it's possible to make the vessels smaller still or more likely to get more sensors on a standard vessel design. Now here's an interesting application. It was due to be debuted at um, the 2020 Oceanology Show the other day. And it's Ocean Alpha's bright orange dol dolphin light boy that can be remotely controlled from up to half a kilometre away. It's about a metre long and travels onto site by a pair of water jets. The battery has a 30 minute endurance and there are two high penetration fog lights that make the boy even more highly visible over long distances even in bad weather. It can travel at speeds of 10 knots. In fact, all small vehicles, um, all small vessels seem to be able to work at speed. Small vessels are typically powered by batteries driving propellers or water jets. And these water jets prevent the blades from entangling in themselves in water plants or ropes and that sort of stuff. The small vessels can navigate sharp turns, which makes them particularly useful when travelling backwards and forwards along survey grids or accurately following prescribed uh, multi-directional courses. They can also turn quickly on demand and examine zones of interest mid midway through the survey. Another advantage of small USVs is that they, they work in shallow and hard to reach locations, the sort of places you probably wouldn't want to stick man boats in if you can help it. Now these small USVs can either be monohulls or catamarans, each has its own advantage. Monohull manufacturers say the vessels act um, better in heavier weather, navigate um, through tight spaces or narrow channels, they can take pretty comprehensive payloads, easier to dock, take up less space. The maintenance costs are probably lower than for two hull designs. With a wider beam, catamarans are difficult to capsize, especially when turning quickly. But if one does turn over, it can be an absolute sod to write it, whereas some monohulls are actually designed to be self-writing. There are quite a few catamaran models, some wider than long, some not. In some, the width can be increased for additional stability. Some have three hulls, well, strictly speaking, a main hull and two outriggers on a sliding crossbar. Because of the smaller weighted surface, multi-hulls are faster, more fuel efficient, and because of the shallow drafts, they can go places where monohulls can't. The properties that drive small USVs include payload space, endurance, maybe portability. One of the best ways to make USVs very portable is to use an inflatable hull, like this one here. Um, this one, the hull's two metres long, has a pair of 12 volt thrusters and can travel at three knots with a maximum four hours endurance. So check out the optional surface prop to blow it across the water. If you want to know more about um, subsea engineering, read UT3, the magazine of the Society for Underwater Technology.